meanwhile, the whole time, there's these government people in, in the back room, you know, and, and so I pull up my laptop and I turn it on trying to see if there's any Wi-Fi connection in this conference room. And what Wi-Fi do I get? I find DNA 1 and DNA 2 are the only available Wi-Fis. So I turn off the computer, and, and we're there all night, and, and these people don't talk to us, and I'm terrified to go and talk to them, but they're clearly back there, like, listening and watching, and, you know, I get on the cell phone, and I'm talking to somebody, and before I can tell them the address of where I am, the cell phone gets disconnected, kind of thing, they do that a lot. Um, and anyway, this is where it gets really weird. We're in this place, and, and I go in the back, and I take some food, and the food is, like, wiggling around, special, like it was put there already, and there was nutriment drinks, and I drink that, and, and then, um, you know, we're hanging out during the night, we're talking, and, and I'm going through all this emotional craziness, and, um, and then we drink this drink, a little tiny bottle of liquor we split between the both of us, that knocks us out, boom, it tastes like it was, like, something other than liquor it didn't taste like liquor to me anyway I wake up a few minutes later uh, and and I see like this is where it gets weird I see this um, interdimensional being about three feet high or so sort of come in the room I got my head on the desk and, and it comes in the room and and it and there's all these other little creatures that come in the room. And this window opens up behind me, shook. And um, there behind me, I can see, although I didn't turn my head, and there's like this alien being, not human, or humanoid, uh, and a human, maybe a couple others, I don't know. And this dimensional thing says to me in telepathy, unlike the, the mind control stuff that I get from the humans, which you can actually hear in your brain. This was telepathy where I just knew what was asked of me. It was deep inside my head, and and I would respond. And the being said to me, Timothy, you're very sick, and we need to help you. Uh, you have something in you that we need to remove, and we're here to help. And I said, okay. And... Um, they said, we're going to do some surgery on you, and, and we want to know, you're going to be okay. And, and, and they did something to me where my consciousness, I don't know how to explain this. It was as if my consciousness split into two beings, and the one that was up here uh, was the one that was getting the telepathy and answering, and the one that was down here was my body. And the one that was up here, they were saying, do you feel any pain? Do you feel any pain? And I was saying, no, no. And the one that was down here, my body was going. <laughs> so I was shivering and, and making all this noise with my body. But my consciousness was talking to this being separately. And they were saying, do you feel any pain? And I say, no. Um, as this is happening, why am I feeling pain? Well, from out of the ceiling, it appeared, you know, uh, it seemed this black dome, you know, half dome-like thing came out of the ceiling or something and came down and these long articulated, uh, I don't know if they were carbon colored or steel colored, maybe some combination of both, long articulated um, surgical devices, it seemed, you know, came out of this thing and were uh, operating on my head and I could feel something happening there as though my head had been opened somehow and stuff was being done in there. Um, at the same time, near my groin, under my crotch, between the anus and the testicles, I felt as though uh, these little beings, now these were a little about an inch, inch and a half, little sort of like humanoid beings, and they didn't speak to me, they had sort of this little chatter between them, <laughs> but they didn't speak to me, and they were doing the work on the bottom half where they had some kind of long uh, articulating uh, either silver or, or black or combination of uh, articles that seemed to go... I had the impression that I was being opened up in that small space and that they were articulating these things inside of me somehow and doing something. And this went on for, 
I don't know how long, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, I, I really don't know. Uh, and during that time, it was really only, do you feel any pain? Do you feel any pain? No, no. And I was shaking and shivering. And then they said, okay. And they were done. And they I guess they finished up or whatever. And they left. And, and I think I thanked them. I don't remember. And... And I went to sleep on the desk, and we woke up, you know, maybe an hour later, and the room was freezing cold, like, like, like it was like a, a freezer, not like somebody put the air conditioner on high, but it was literally like a freezer. You could see your breath in this room. It was so cold, and, and I woke up, and Paige was there. She woke up, um, and and you know, we sat there. We're like, what? Now what? You know. Um, and then eventually somebody came in about an hour later and said, hey, this is the conference room. What are you doing in here? So we left and went and sat in the lobby for a while. And there was a guy outside taking my picture with his camera under his arm. And, and um, Also, earlier in the night, I, I had got the distinct impression that radiation was being applied to me in this conference room. Uh, the reason I say this is because the air began to shimmer in this wavy kind of way. And I would dismiss it just as all delusional, except that there was a can of Coca-Cola on the, on the table that was open. And we had some of these little packets that we had gotten from the emergency room where you rip them open and they have like mercurochrome or chloride or something in there that's a, a disinfectant, uh, antimicrobial disinfectant that we're using to wipe the bugs off our hands and stuff. And there were one of those packets on the, on the desk and the, the pump can was moving it was sort of shaking on the table and sort of deforming in shape a little bit. And this little packet that was sealed began to like bubble almost as though the stuff inside was boiling and it was moving. It was changing shape and as though something inside was boiling and the air was shimmering and, and they only did this when Petra left the room. When she left the room, they turned this thing on and then she came back and they turned it off and this happened a couple of times um, and the only reason I think it's real is because later at some other guy's house where they made me go when I said you know I was using my phone and the stylus melted in my hand I still have the stylus the plastic pieces where there's metal connected melted so uh, I'm certain that different forms of, of radiation were used um, after that night in the lawyer's office, uh, in the conference room, that morning when I woke up, I felt so much better. Uh, I looked and I didn't appear to have those red things in my veins anymore, uh, at least not that I could see, and I felt very strong and, you know, as though I'd gotten my strength back and, and I was happy and we went out to go to our program and, and I realized that there were all these people following us still, you know, taking pictures and, and whatever. But, you know, we sort of got used to all these people following us. And then, anyway, then later, like two days later or something, I was in a restaurant and I had to use the, the restroom. And I'm in the restroom and somebody outside takes this big light and flash. It goes all up and down the door. Big, bright, really bright light. And I hear them laughing outside, so I 